Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm Pat McSherry, and today I'm up in Ottertail County fishing with Connor Kleist for big crappies. Now this time of year, uh, most of the lakes throughout northern Minnesota, even central Minnesota, uh, the crappies really like to hang out in that deeper basin, you know, 25 to 35 feet of water. And that's not real conducive to catching and releasing crappies. So if you're looking to get in on a great bite where you can get on some lakes where the fish are a little bit shallower, where you can practice catch and release, uh, this Ottertail County has a lot of really great lakes where the fish like to hang out in that little bit shallower water. So Connor's just out drilling holes right now. We're just getting going for the day, but we're looking to get in on a great crappie bite here in Ottertail County. <laughs> All right, so we just got done. Connor popped probably, I don't know, how many holes did you drill, Connor? Maybe 40 or so? Probably, yeah. Uh, Connor drilled 40. I started out, I think I drilled maybe 20, 25, just so we had a really nice base of holes here in this basin to start to kind of use the mega live to chase them around, and we already have holes drilled, so we're not having to find fish, then drill holes on them, the fish spook. It's really tough to kind of pin them down that way. So as you can see right here, all the way from 55 feet, clear over to 15 feet, those are all crappies on the bottom. Every one of these, those are all crappies. But just an awesome tool to be able to pin down these crappies. And you know, being the first winter that we've used it, I think that's definitely the way to do it too. As long as you know there's some fish in the area, just drill it out to begin with, and then use it to kind of chase them around that that already pre-drilled area. But it's also a really good search and destroy. <laughs> so they left me, what way'd they go? Oh, uh, there's still a bunch of them just off to your left. Oh, one found me. <laughs> but there's, you should be, you should have, well, they might be a little closer. They might be in between you and I. You're They're probably right at way. the end of the school, which there's a hole right there, I guarantee. There's fish in that hole for Is sure. It? I might go fish that one. I think you should. <laughs> There's one. Fish on. Fish on. The skunk is out of the boat. <laughs> so, as long as I can get him topside. <laughs> what you got? There we go. Not a bad start. No, oh, nice little 12 inch or so. Caught him on that probe jig pink UV. I do have a pot of them down there. I'm going to get right back and see if I can capitalize while they're still under me. A lot of times, you know, we're fishing like 20 feet of water and they're going to be just kind of cruising this basin moving pretty fast. So I want to make sure and get down there as fast as possible to keep them, keep them under me. Oh yeah, I got one charged up already here. And I came and found a hole right by you. Yep. That a boy. One feels a little better. Does it? It's got a nice he's, bend in the rod. Oh yeah, he's digging. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Doesn't want to come up the hole. Well, I hope it's a crappie. Uh, nice crappie, about like the last one. Oh yeah. Not bad at all. Pop him off. Real nice fish there. Probably a 12. They get bigger. Mm-hmm. Back down he goes, and like I said, you know, Connor told me with how fast these fish have been roaming out here, he's been fishing out here for the last week or two, on and off, and um, with how fast they're roaming, a heavier tungsten jig is kind of tough to beat, just because you can get down there a lot faster. So I'm fishing that 116th ounce 
uh, probe worm is what it is in a pink UV. It's amazing. You get four or five. Ooh. Let's see if we can double. I think we're gonna. <laughs> it's funny, you know, ooh. you basically what we're dealing with when we're on a good, there you go. Yep. When we're on a good pot of them is, you know, you might have that school three or four feet thick on the graph and my experience is you always want to stay a foot above that school and just try and let that school build underneath you and hopefully try and target the more aggressive fish and get them to come up and chase. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big <laughs> one. I had four or five fish and just like you're saying, just staying way above and more aggressive, not just fishing a single mark, but really just trying to call those fish in. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing when, when a big one says that's mine, he's going to, she's going to go get it. She is all business. Nice. That is a, that's a probably 14. Yep. I'd say it's right 14 there. all day. We'll get her back. Oop. From panfish to predators, nobody does ice fishing like VMC. VMC has created an unrivaled arsenal of weapons for the savvy panfish angler to deploy. It doesn't matter if you're fishing fast or forced to go ultra finesse. VMC has a bite-sized offering sure to entice the most wary panfish. Searching for big fish with teeth? From flutter to rattlespoons, VMC has the most attractive UV finishes and natural bait fish patterns that big walleyes can't resist. Only from VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters in Walker, Minnesota has the hottest products for ice fishing at unbeatable prices. Everything from Garmin, Mice Electronics, Ice Shelters, and Ice Clothing from all the top brands. And the newest lithium-powered augers with special everyday pricing on the Garmin LifeScope Ice Bundle. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or placing an order online at reedsports.com, our state-of-the-art distribution center ensures you'll get your order fast. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters offers the best service, best price, best advice, guaranteed. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> uh, that one came up aggressive, definitely up hit it, which is always fun. Yes it is, as is this one gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Double. <clears throat> Here we yep. are. Nice average size on them though. Yeah. These would be good eaters if we were looking to keep some. Here's a little better one. Oh yeah, there you go. That one's starting to have the hump back. Yep. They just look a little different mm -hmm. when they get that big. You can tell it's got some good genetics, but there's a ton of fish down there. We got a little bit of a weather front today. Uh, it's a south wind blowing about 20 to 30, but luckily we have uh, the shoreline kind of breaking that wind for us and we're able to fish pretty comfortably, really. Could be a lot worse. Oh yeah, it wouldn't be nearly as nice on the other side of the lake. No. That rarely happens, it seems like. The fish are always on the windy side. Why wouldn't they be? Can never be easy. Right. And two, take advantage of, you know, the mornings. I know as, as our sun will get up, these fish are just gonna move quicker and quicker. Ooh. There you go. I'm working a pot of them here. I'm trying to get one excited. That's a scraper. Easy release. Oh, I missed him. That a boy. That's just fun. I think I might have one charged up. 
Another nice fish. Oh, they're healthy. Oh, yeah. Got one. Feels like another eater sized one. I'll take every one of them though. Smaller crappie. Mine have vacated. You got a lot over there? Looks like there's four or five of them. Okay. They're definitely moving around a lot. You can see them, they're blinking a ton. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to even leave a hole because you know there's probably more fish filtering through just behind them. I got a wave coming. Come on, fish. Little guy. They would taste good. Yes, they would. Perfect eating size, a lot of them. Oh, it's not like they're little, I mean, no. they're still nice fish. You run into a lot of lakes, they all have that same year class, you know, they're right. all 10 to 12s, or they're all whatever they might be. But out here, it seems like you kind of get just a mix of it all. A lot of really nice bluegills too, but you see them last hour light kind of deal this time of year, it seems. Yep. One. And I've got a pike in my hole, so I'm gonna. Do ya? <laughs> it sure looks like it. This one's digging its heels in a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. Back he goes. There we go. That a boy. As this one's coming up, there's a lot more down there. A little better fish. Get her unwrapped. Come here, girl. There we go. Get these orange mitts off my hand. Good cold hands. Nice fish right there. Thick, big old fins on her. All right. Same thing, using the nymph. Haven't put bait on once today with the 16th ounce. This is a tubby jig. Pop her out there. Have to readjust a little bit, but just old fish, beat up, cool looking, can't beat that. Ottertoe County, full of fish just like that. We'll get her back. There we go. And my goodness, was there ever a lot more waiting for me. Speed is the name of the game. It's like we've kind of stressed today is that those fish don't really slow down for anyone. So if you can get her on button, fire right back down, a lot of times you can uh, catch her brother or sister that's waiting. So we'll see if we can do just that. The Pro Lithium 40 volt light from Strike Master is going to kick your gas. By combining their 40 volt power head, a new six amp hour battery and the light flight laser drill, Strike Master has achieved the pinnacle of ice shredding performance. Weighing in at 21 pounds, the Pro Lithium 40 volt can drill up to 115 holes through 16 inches of ice, while the Light Flight Laser Drill provides a smooth, nearly effortless cut. Strike Master, kick your gas. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer, is a proud sponsor of In Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state of the art facility in Aiken or visit us 24 7 at BrandleGM.com. Does your sonar offer dual spectrum chirp, producing razor sharp images on an ultra bright HD display? The ability to tailor the display to the way you fish. Precision GPS functionality with legendary Lake Master mapping to move effortlessly from ice to open water. If not, you should be fishing an Ice Helix, the electronic system that offers all the features and performance successful ice anglers demand, only from Humminbird. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say a man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com.
we go. Ooh, that's different. <laughs> Don't be a bass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come here. There we go. <laughs> That's more like it. I don't mind having to pick through a bunch of 10, 12, 13 inches to catch one like that. <laughs> Upper 14, maybe close to 15, but haven't changed up anything. Still using that 16th ounce. Those fish are just cruising by way too quick to really have a slow jig with this wind to try to fight it down. So fire that down there. And there's a slab right there. Beautiful fish. Big, thick shoulders on her. And we'll get her right back to where she belongs. And you can grab him by the tail. It's a nice fish. <laughs> One. See if there's any more waiting. Nope, time to go. <laughs> and I need a new plastic. There he is. Got a few of them down there. Yeah? Yeah. I did, but they left me. I've been, uh, I tried putting on a slab wrap, you know, this, this morning those fish were pretty dang aggressive and I thought, oh, maybe I'll try and weed out some of those smaller fish and target the bigger ones with that slab wrap, but I couldn't get them to bite on it. So I went right back to the old, uh, 16th ounce probe worm with a plastic. It's a nice fish there. But we'll get that one back. You know, this time of day, getting to kind of late morning, early, you know, afternoon. I think it's 11.30 right now. And the fish are definitely roaming a lot faster now. It's a lot harder to get in front of them. And so the name of the game is just hole hopping around hope to catch one fish out of a hole and then you're off moving to the next one. But it's just kind of a lot of drilling holes and a lot of hole hopping in order to get fish on top of the ice. Ooh, there's one. Feels good to bend the rod here again. It's been a little bit. There we go. Nothing too crazy big there, but kind of a good indicator. I finally actually had a school of fish that stuck around and were actually kind of interested in my uh, presentation for once. We're kind of in the middle of the day there and honestly it was really kind of just slow. You know, you can chase and chase and chase and you know, you pluck one or two here and there, uh, but really nothing too crazy. And now as we're kind of getting closer at two o'clock early afternoon, now we can actually kind of notice fish are starting to engage in our lures again, come back to it, um, give us a chance. So not nothing crazy big there, but a nice fish. We'll get her back and hopefully that's kind of just an indicator on things that come for the afternoon. So we'll uh, see what there is down there. My fish kind of left, so on to the next, but it's kind of the name of the game, run and gun and stay on the move. You get your steps in, that's for sure. There he is. That one got charged up. The wind's blowing pretty good now. I mean, it's been blowing all morning, but especially hard right now. I've got a feeling this might be a good one here. Yeah. More of the same, just had some spunk there by the hole. But one thing I love doing when I'm fishing in a wind like this, when you can't be in a house, you know, it's always nice to be in a house where you don't have that wind blowing your line around but if you're forced to be out on the ice chasing these fish around because they're roaming so much uh, it's really important to keep that line close to the hole so what i like to do is basically you got to get down on your knees or sit on a pail or a bucket or whatever and you got to hold that rod tip really close to that water so you can actually detect the bites and that is why we like using a little bit longer rods to you know, I'm fishing a 34 inch bull whip. Uh, in scenarios like this, I'd actually like it to be a little bit longer just so I can possibly stand up and still have that line or the tip of the rod real close to the water there. And it just helps keep that wind from blowing your line around and being able to feel and see those bites as it happens. 
but it looks like I'm going to be on to the next hole here. I, I wasn't able to get down fast enough to keep that school under me. It's kind of been the name of the game today. Norsk Lithium offers a complete lineup of lithium ion batteries to power your ice electronics that provide huge weight savings and the power you need to fish from sun up to sun down. Available in 7.5, 15, and 20 amp hour capacities, Norsk Lithium batteries are perfectly matched to power your mechanical, digital, and live imaging sonar systems, featuring two patent pending USB ports for powering all of your USB devices and an integrated LED power indicator. Find your perfect battery online at norsklithium.com. Here at StrikeMaster, our goal, our focus, was to create the warmest, most thoughtfully engineered, and safest lineup of outerwear for the ice angler ever produced. StrikeMaster's SOS Stay on Surface flotation technology will be there if you need it, providing up to two hours of flotation when the jacket and bibs are worn as a pair. StrikeMaster, wear the hottest brand on the ice. This winter, Reeds in Walker, Minnesota is celebrating their 50th anniversary by giving the viewers of the In-Depth Outdoors TV show the chance to win the ultimate ice fishing machine. Prize package includes a Polaris Ranger XP1000 with tracks and a flatbed trailer. To enter, visit our website at indepthoutdoors.com and look for the 50th anniversary logo to submit your entry. The winner will be selected May of 2022 and I will personally deliver the Polaris and trailer to the winner. Enter today for your chance to win at indepthoutdoors.com. Boy, they got a little stingy midday, didn't they? Huh. Huh. That's an understatement. <laughs> we had a lot of fun chasing them around this little basin earlier this morning, and they were pretty aggressive when you could get on top of them. You know, they'd they'd give you a chance to at least at least catch two or three out of a school. But now midday, you're lucky if you can get one. <sighs> And it's just a smaller one, probably a little on the bottom side of the average for the day. But I'll felt take him. To, felt good to get a bite again though, I bet. Yep, yep. Fire him back down. Looks like the school is gone, but actually this is a good time to kind of show what we're fishing. Um, and you can kind of see the whole entire stretch that we've been fishing. You can see where we've been walking around hole hopping. This basin right here is bottoms out at 20 feet or so. And we've been just fishing these corners and these edges and that's where we've been chasing around all these crappies. You know, you'll chase them to one end, catch a few, chase them to the other end, catch a few more. But that's a pretty good representation of the types of spots that we're looking for when we're targeting these crappies. They are just these smaller 20 foot basins. And for whatever reason, the lakes around here in Ottertail County, it does seem like you have more of those bites in shallower water late in the winter. You know, in Northern Minnesota where I grew up, uh, spots like this would be great. Early ice, not so great this late in the winter, but this is a pretty cool area. You can catch them all year long in some of these spots. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, there you go. One was hungry enough and dumb enough to eat. Can't say it's a big one, but hey, it would taste good, that I know. Just a nice average, haven't really changed up what I'm doing, but uh, slow and steady kind of throughout the day, and now we're actually kind of seeing fish interact with us. So I got more down there, so I'm not gonna waste any time here. Make hay while the sun still shines. Nice pod down there. I noticed too, you know, our fish kind of got a lot more uh, finicky in a sense, but I think there's a lot more bluegills that are kind of starting to filter their way in. And with this heavy tungsten and bigger plastic, uh, you don't necessarily get as many bites. So definitely a lot more finicky fish down there. Uh, still trying to just kind of pick out those crappies. So not really downsizing or putting any meat on. Um, but if I was, I think I could be catching some nice bluegills down there right now too. But looking for that big crappie. So see if persistence pays off. There he is. Well, we're getting a little bit later in the day now. You know, midday, they were pretty picky. You know, we still caught our fish, but it was definitely few and far between. 
and we're hoping for a little bit more of a you know bite window this afternoon of course we've had a great day either way uh, can't really complain with the action we've had there we go another nice crappie there I had another one down there and not much has changed you know I've tried a few different baits today uh, slab wrap a couple different colors of plastics and still is tough to beat that pink so I just have kind of kept with it and that one liked it so I'm gonna get back down here and see if I can't get one of these other ones to play there we go felt like a little different bite Oh yeah, the bluegill little ta 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 ta. Oh yeah. That time of night, of course, he's all spun up. There we go. Not a bad bluegill at all right there. Whoop, come here, guy. Thick across the backs. Really nice fish there. And just kind of like what we talked about, now we're getting to, I think it's almost 5 o'clock now. Uh, you're going to see kind of more of a mix. And we've kind of been seeing it on the screen too, a lot more kind of finicky, slower moving fish. And when you do have that occasional crappie, it comes flying up, does its up bite. But now we're kind of slowing it down and uh, yeah, seeing a lot of these nice bluegills kind of start swinging through as the sun gets a little bit lower. Sitting right on the edge of that finger we talked about that runs out. Um, as it gets later, these fish, that's where they're going to be moving, is moving up on top, up into those weeds at night to kind of go up and feed. So we're just kind of sitting between the basin and that finger and letting those fish kind of come to us. But beautiful bluegill there. We'll get her unbuttoned and get her right back. Gotta love when they fill up the hands. Popped out. And see you, guy. And my fish are gone once again. Well, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Connor and I had a blast up here fishing for these crappies. You know, the day started out super hot, uh, fishing that early morning bite. Uh, and then throughout the day, we we're able to stay on fish all day long with the Mega Live, be able to pick fish off here and there. They definitely got a lot more finicky, but we're still able to put a bunch of fish on the ice. Uh, if you're looking to get in on an awesome crappie or panfish bite here in Ottertail County, make sure you give Connor a call or go to otcfishing.com. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.